Hello friends, my name is Praveen and today I am going to talk about dependency injection in ASP.NET Core 6 Web APIs. So for this I am using uh, Visual Studio 2022. So you can use Visual Studio 2022 and Swagger to run uh, and test your web APIs. So let's get started. Create a new project. Here search for web API. Now select this web API, click next, give a name, okay, so click on next button, create, now a web API has been created, so let's go inside and see what the, uh, what this code is all about. Now you can see here there is some code in the program.cs and there is a default weather forecast object uh, which has some properties and then there is a controller here weather forecast controller so this has been uh, given by default to us so you can use it or you can delete it if you want and you want to write your own code you can do that but this is uh, just to show an example and you can also use this example to run this so let's now run this application now you can see uh, the Swagger page has opened uh, uh, has opened up and uh, here you can see the weather forecast uh, get method. So uh, click on try it out and then execute and here you can see the response 200 is success. So you can see all the response uh, from the API. So that's how you run and test API using Swagger which is inbuilt uh, uh, basically in the code. Uh, it is using the Swagger container uh, to invoke Swagger and uh, test your API. Okay, let's close it and uh, go back to our code. Now here, uh, I will now create a new class and initialize that class through dependency, dependency injection. So let me add a new class. So this class name is employee uh, and also I will add uh, a interface. So it will be I employee. So, fine. Uh, and then let's uh, use this interface here. My uh, employee and implement those methods. So, implement interface. And you can see here. Uh, so, the uh, methods has been implemented. Okay. So, if we want to uh, use this, uh, let's say I want to use this employee in my controller okay so for that i have to initialize it here private i employee underscore underscore employee and uh, i will pass uh, this to the constructor so I will uh, pass the employee uh, object here and I will also initialize the local variable employee which is underscore employee equal to employee so this is wh where uh, the injection will happen basically so uh, when this constructor is invoked so at this point uh, the employee object will be initialized with the instance of this employee class okay so this class instance will be created and it will be injected here uh, wherever this employee is here okay and then the local variable underscore employee will get initialized so once it is initialized we want to see what exactly will happen so to test this what i will do is i will provide a name here name is equal to and then close it and then i will pass this back 
uh, so that we can see this uh, see this in the swagger now to pass it i have to add one more uh, property so let me add that property public string make it uh, nullable uh, string let's say city So that's our property uh, and let's go back to our controller here. So now I should be able to get this city. So city equal to, I want to provide this. Yeah. All right. So I have added, uh, I've initialized this property city uh with the name that we have provided here so when you call this so this will be returned back uh to the uh swagger interface there uh here one more thing to uh, note here is that we have not till now we have not used dependent dependency injection so if i run this code so it will throw me an error okay so i want to show you first so let's build it and then run this application Okay, here we are. Uh, and now let's try it out. Execute. And you can see that uh, I'm getting an error uh, that it cannot activate uh, this because the get service uh, exception is dependency injection exception is there. Okay, it is unable to get the proper uh, container for this. It is not able to initialize it. Okay, so you'll get an error like this. So next, what I will do is I'll go back. To my code go to program class here you can see a commit add services to the con to container okay so what i will do is i will just add a line of code here saying builder dot services dot add scoped okay uh and here what i will do is i will uh use the namespace here so which is this namespace so that i can use these objects using okay i think that's it so I'm using the namespace now. I have to use uh, I employee, I employee, and then I say that uh, this is how uh, you need to initialize it. Okay, so I employee, employee. I'll come back to this code uh, uh, a bit later, but uh, for now, let's say that now this is this is what you need to add to initialize this. So wherever it uh, encounters uh, a I employee type, the employee object will be initialized. So, which means here, when we say I employee employee, so a initialization will happen and that particular object or a container will be passed here. So, uh, which will then uh, initialize this local variable. So, before I run the code, I have to uh, make a correction to this employee object here because there is a, you can see that uh, this exception, we have to remove this, otherwise, we will get an error. Uh, so let's remove this and keep it simple. Perhaps we can make it uh, nullable as well. Uh, anyway, description we are not using, so I will not worry about it. Uh, so I am getting an error. Okay, so here it is not matching, so I have to make it nullable as well. So now the error is gone. So uh, which uh, so now we can run it. Click here, try it out, execute. Okay, so here you can see city is London, right? In the response, you can see city is London, and we are not getting any errors, of course, uh, because we are getting a 200 success, and also we are getting a valid response. So, so that's uh, how you implement dependency injection. Now, the question is, uh, why should you use uh, dependency, uh, dependency injection? Uh, now, it uh, makes your code uh, very flexible. It implements loose coupling. Uh, so uh, 
if you don't use dependency dependency injection then what you need to do is that you have to initialize for example employee is there right uh, so what you have to do here is that you have to initialize it like this with the employee object so basically what you are doing is you're directly calling an entity or initializing an entity employee directly within your controller which is not a good architectural practice uh, because if employee changes then you have to change wherever the references are made you have to change it everywhere right uh, so so that that can break the code and that is not a, a good practice so which is which is basically creating a tight dependency uh, whereas if you use a dependency uh, injection then in that case uh, if anything changes then you have to go to your program.cs and just just make the change here if the name changes or any 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 other change happens uh, you can uh, uh, make this change here okay so that's where uh, you can uh, so you are introducing uh, loose coupling without uh, uh, breaking your code uh, another uh, advantage is that you can in fact a big advantage is that you can inject different kinds of containers or different instances uh, which implement uh, i employee here uh, you can uh, use that during the unit testing so you can inject different containers and see if your code is running or behaving correctly or not uh, during your unit testing process there are other advantages also but i feel these are the two main advantages of uh, di uh, now let's go to this program.cs code and see what is happening here so this is where uh, you can see i have said that add scoped uh, so there are three so this basically determines the lifetime of a container okay uh, so when you say add scoped uh, which means uh, with every request whenever there is a request a new instance of employee object will be created uh, similarly there are few other things uh, there is uh, something called a singleton so when you say add singleton uh, the same instances will be used uh, throughout the session of a user so which means with every request uh, there will be no new containers which will be created but the same instance will uh, will serve that request so the same instance will be reused so that is singleton and then another is uh, add transient transient is every time you refer or whenever the code encounters uh, a i employee and a object it will create a new instance of it so within the same request so there could be multiple instances of that object uh, so that is transient which means the lifetime of that particular object will be very temporary and it will as soon as that object is used uh, it will be destroyed okay and that may happen multiple times uh, during a request so uh, that is how uh, where it is used now you may be wondering this line of code here which is saying underscore logger equal to logger uh, so here also di is used but you don't see this in the program.cs there is no such initialization here but still it works and uh, there is no error for underscore logger here so this is because uh, because of this line of code which is saying that create builder so uh, this is an inbuilt functionality uh, uh, of asp.net core where uh, it initializes certain objects and as part of that it also initializes i logger so that's why there is no need to explicitly uh, 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 use di for the i logger uh, implementation uh, so so that's all uh, uh, for this tutorial uh, hope you have enjoyed uh, so please uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching